Check one, two. Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. Michael Quarles with podcast number 117. Today's podcast, we have the five questions sent in by real estate investors like yourself who had a question and needed an answer. Here we go. Question one, part one. When I get a realtor for my BPO and I'm ready to list the house on the MLS, do I tell the realtor when they find a buyer that the buyer will pay for all the closing costs? Well, typically your realtor is going to advise you on what kinds of closing costs in your area the sellers are accustomed to paying and what kinds the buyers are accustomed to paying. So all areas are a little bit different. So you, you don't necessarily have that choice or that luxury, although everything's negotiable. You want to sell a property, so you do not want to create obstacles of not being able to sell. And like in my area, I'm going to pay half of the escrow fees. I'm going to pay all of the title insurance. I'm going to pay for the real estate agent's commission, those kinds of things. I'll pay the transfer tax because that's a fee to me. I'll pay for the natural hazard disclosure because that's a fee to the seller. And I'm going to do whatever work requirements with or within reason. So I really don't have a choice. I'm just going to do what's normal for the area. Question two, part two. Should I open up escrow right away or should I wait till the BPO in, in, in case I need to go back with the seller and renegotiate the contract? I think you should open up escrow right away because what we're trying to do is we want to see if there's anything that's on the preliminary title report that's going to cause us not to want to invest in the BPO. So say, for instance, you know we have a tax lien or a child support lien or an involuntary lien against the property. That's going to cause the seller not to be able to sell. At that point, we don't want to do the BPO. So open up escrow, then do your BPO. Question three, part three. When I open escrow, do I tell the escrow agent that the buyer would be paying for the services or should I pay for any fees in regards to opening up escrow? Escrow typically doesn't cost you to open it up. Sometimes they're going to want a $500 deposit, which will go towards any of the costs that are involved in costs that you'll pay. But again, this falls back to the agent that you're going to list your property through. They're going to advise you what's normal for your area and you will want to keep to normality. You don't want to again, bring up any obstacles. Um, that's going to cause your house not to sell. We want to sell these things. So it's very, very, very important that we stay in that mind frame. Thanks for listening to Buy, Sell, Fix, Flip. We'll be right back. Are you running out of leads? It's time you tried Yellow Letters at yellowletters.com. Get motivated seller leads through yellow letters, postcards, zip letters, typed professional letters, greeting cards, door hangers, and business cards. Yellow Letters is a full-service marketing company created with your success in mind. Get the personal attention you need to get your direct mail campaign started and get in touch at yellowletters.com. And we are back in three, three, two, two, one. one. Question number four, what do you do when comps for a neighborhood are all over the place? I have NMLX access, so the information is good. Well, you have to really then start looking at finding the like type. So, you know, is it within five years of, uh, of year built? It's, a, this, you know, within 200 square feet up and down a square footage. Is it the same three bedroom, two bath kinds of things? Is the construction style the same? And you're wanting to look for those comps. And then once you do that, and if you're still all over the place, now look for ownership, who owns it. And if you start seeing a lot of LLCs or corps, and you'll find that those are going to be owned under the properties that are maybe lower comps, well, that's telling you maybe they're selling something in as is value, that kind of thing. Or if you see, there could be the reverse of that, where you see a lot of those types, but they're the higher end ones. And that means that they've gone in there and, and rehabbed them. So you really have to start which is why the six packs are so important. Not the drinking ones, but those are important some days too, but most of the time they're not. But the six packs, when you're actually going out to a, the houses that are on the market and the houses that have just sold and comparing the amenities and the concessions that the sellers are giving and the, the buyers received, 
as it compares to your house or your subject property. So uh, you can't just look sometimes at black and white you know, ink on a piece of white paper or black ink on a piece of white paper and, and come to any specific conclusions. So that's why we use our seven data sets. They're all over the place too. And we kind of take an average of those and say, okay, we'll take that and we'll start that. And then from there, we'll order that BPO and, and fall forward. Question number five, I have an issue. I purchased a property for 192, congratulations, um, in June, and it's scheduled to close in July for 297 with no repairs. Now they're bragging. There's absolutely, they're bragging. I can tell when someone's bragging. I bought it for 192, no repairs. I'm selling it a month later for 297. I know that's $105,000 difference. They're bragging. I know who this is, so I, he gets to brag. He has six houses in escrow, so he's doing an outstanding job, guys. And then he's one of my coaching students, so he's gonna make $105,000 on this house. Here's his issue, though. He may be having a seasoning issue. He's only owned it currently for about 37 days. And the buyer who likes the property, the property appraised for 297, it's a rental, so the, the buyer is an investor who wants to keep it as a rental. He wants to buy it, he just, he just may have to wait another 53 days, which is the 90 day seasoning period. And that's okay. One of the things we don't wanna do, and in his case, he couldn't, he couldn't say he did anything to the property. So we, we can't lie, we can't create lender fraud by saying, hey, I rehabbed it, I did this, I did that, or whatever. I mean, we're no different than Walmart who buys you know, a t-shirt for 60 cents and, and sells it for a dollar or whatever they they, sell, they buy and sell them for. They're, everybody's in the business of making money and we can be too. Seasoning is an issue of the borrower, how good their, their credit is and that kind of stuff. And if you start having seasoning issues and you're gonna make $105,000 by waiting another 53 days, well, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, who wouldn't wait 53 days to make $105,000? You know, when they call you and they if they have questions and they, they want to know, you know, they don't know how much he paid for it. So they want to know how much he paid for it. They know when he bought it, but you know, how much do you pay for it? Well, it's really no one's business. It isn't. Why disclose it? Don't tell them. If they can't find it out because your state's a non-disclosure state, don't, don't volunteer the information. Wait the 53 days. That's all you have to do. Who cares? All right. And then fall forward. I think he did a great job. And the fact that he has six other ones in escrow too, that's pretty friggin' awesome. I got some, I gotta tell you guys, I've got some coaching students that are just friggin' blowing it up. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with these guys and gals. And um, speaking of coaching, I wanted to say I have two seats that came available. So if any of you guys that are listening, I have two coaching seats that are available. Most of you know that I, I stopped my coaching because I became, a, I got to a max. Well. I have two that are falling off, and so I have two that are start that are available to start. So if anybody wants those two, give us a call. Tell us that you um, you want to get into the program, and we'll go from there. I appreciate doing these podcasts, guys. I hope you um, hope you enjoyed podcast one sixteen. That was the presentation we did with one of the coaching students to really go through um, some of the objection handlers and that kind of stuff. And I and I know it was an hour and some minute long, and boy, those get tiring um, and they're hard to listen to, but um, you know, maybe break it up and listen to it over three or four days. But um, I appreciate everybody. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.